50 years ago this week, a revolution got underway right here in New York City. In fact, just a few miles south of where I'm standing right now. The LGBTQ community, tired of being harassed by the authorities, decided enough was enough and took a stand at the Stonewall Inn. Their actions helped change the face of history. And this week, they're being honored for their courage. NBC's Joe Fryer has our Sunday Closer. To many, Stonewall is much more than a bar. Well, Stonewall to me is a verb. It's a call to action. It always was. Martin Boyce was 21 years old back in 1969 and was no stranger to the Stonewall Inn. Despite the dim lighting and watered down drinks, it was a popular refuge for gays, lesbians, drag queens, and the transgender community. It was sort of like a, a gay Noah's Ark, you know, with two of every type of gay people. Back then, police raids on gay bars were common, so when officers showed up at Stonewall on a sweltering June night, no one was really surprised until the crowd fought back. People just went crazy. They started throwing everything in their pockets that they didn't need. Bottles were thrown, fires were set, and an uprising was born. When it was happening around you, what were you thinking and feeling in that moment? Well, you couldn't feel anything because a riot is a swirl. And then there's smells and smoke and sweat. It's madness. The protest would continue for several nights. The impact is on display at the New York Public Library, home to an exhibit called Love and Resistance, Stonewall 50. This may be the first demonstrations in the, in the United States. Jason Bauman showed us photos of sparsely attended gay rights marches before Stonewall and massive protests after. Stonewall is not the beginning, but certainly not the end. What is it? It's a turning point. Over the past 50 years, laws have changed. So has public opinion. And this month, with Stonewall's anniversary on the horizon, New York's police commissioner issued an apology for the raid. The actions taken by the NYPD were wrong, plain and simple. As for Stonewall, the place, after multiple transformations, it's once again a bar and remains a popular destination. Stonewall's still here, and I think the spirit of those uh, trans women of color that began the fight, that spirit's still alive in me. Stonewall represents power to me because someone made a stand for my right, for my sake. When same-sex marriage became legal, people flocked here to celebrate. After the Pulse nightclub shooting, they came to mourn. Days later, Stonewall was named a national monument. What they started at the Stonewall Inn in 1969, it's not over. Until we have full global equality, we have to continue that fight and make sure that we keep Stonewall at the forefront of that battle. Half a century later, what happened here still conjures up emotions for Martin Boyce. Oh, that spirit. Because I can feel it, not just say it. What's that spirit? What is it? Oh, it's the spirit of freedom. It's indefinable. It's indefinable. It's something people die for. A spirit that lives on today. I'm glad that it didn't end in a memory of violence. It ended in a memory of hope. Joe, that was a powerful spot. And we know we're about to have the Pride Parade here in New York City. It's Pride Month. What is the connection between Pride and Stonewall? So a lot of people may not realize there's actually a strong connection. The one-year anniversary of Stonewall, June 28, 1970, was the first Pride Parade in New York. It was meant to be a political statement. Other cities had Pride Parades around that time, but now 50 years later, it's a huge celebration all around the country. And I love what you said about the spirit living on. Joe exactly. Fryer, thank you so much. And stay tuned to NBC and MSNBC all this week as we celebrate Pride 50, a half century after the Stonewall Uprising. You can also find more at NBCNews.com slash Stonewall.